Heard of these when you get one and do the work? Selflessness is your personal feeling. But community responsibility uh, for you is to tell them the story. So you are responsible for their dreams. You see, I remember when I went to Chernomir, which is when I went and saw all this big number of Bosnian women in this warehouse. I was feeling that I am helpless and can, I can do nothing. But from there we started a journey to discover the resilience of the people and to promote their cause. Selflessness is good for you if you are an individual, not a community worker, not a community leader. Prophet Sallallahu was an open book for humanity. Even his personal relationship with his wives, the way he taught us to clean ourselves when we go to the toilet, and others, he made it public because he is and was a public figure for humanity. When you are a public figure, you have to balance between what you say so people can benefit from your experience and what you control, the ego in your heart. And the ego could be only controlled by a few things. Your close relationship with Allah, your continuous reading of the Quran, continuous listening to recitation of the Quran and to dars from scholars, then from keep, keep visiting the field to learn from the agony of the people how they are stronger than ourselves. This brings the ego down. So here selflessness cannot be seen <coughs> because the enormity of the problem affecting those people is more than your personal feeling. And but you have to balance in both of them. Any questions from the audience? How do you stay so emotionally strong because things that you see and places that you visit are just so harrowing? How do you come back and stay strong and still carry on? That must be so difficult. We take it as motivation. When I used to feel down, and this is actually uh, Khalid Roy was a revert uh, to Islam, and Muhammad Amran, the one which I was at the end of the film making the, the, the song with him, another revert, he used to tell me, you come back fresh, straight to the office. You come back from South Africa, from Mali, from Malawi, and from the airport to the office. Go home, because they have been charged. When you go to this area, my sister, you go there to clean up the dirt in the heart and the uh, selfishness of the success story and the slow motion of the office work which is a traditional office work. And you get the motivation from the resilience and the patience and the power of the people whom we claim that we are their champion. We are not. They are our champion. Whom we claim that we are saving them. No, we are not. They are saving us because they are paying our salaries from their fund. They are standing on a very firm ground to say, here we are, we are not going to give up or to give in, like the Syrian, the Yemeni, the Somali, the Afghani, and the people in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, people in different parts of the world. They are more stronger than any one of us in this room. So when we go there, 
who feel that you are humbled by what they are doing. And this is when you come back fresh and ready for the fight. Sisters leading. Sisters are leading. <laughs> um, what advice would you give um, like someone like me? I have young children. How do we instill those values of hard work and commitment and understanding and their faith in Islam? How do we, I feel like it's such a difficult time for children now than it was perhaps for us back then um, with the social media and all this. What advice would you give I advise myself and yourself as a mother is to engage the children in a lot of outdoor activities. The children love sports. The children love to play football or other sports. Provide them with this. The children like to go out, out to mountains, trips, journeys and all this, provide them to try to build an institutional memory at the back of their mind when they are young. Otherwise, most of their institutional memory will be coming back from the social media. And sometimes it could be deadly because the child cannot pick and choose what he can see or what. Quite often on my telephone, I found some people coming, uh, some adverts, whatever you call it, uh, absolute pornography. Shocking. One day I was with the children, in, uh, maybe 20 years ago, and when I opened the computer and the whole movie came out, we were shocked, we didn't know what to do, actually. And this way, you gave your children an alternative, another alternative, by programming something for them. Something which I regret is not happening nowadays, it's the uh, organization of young Muslims in the 80s. Start the same year, you were one of them, Jiva. Jiva was one of my teachers. I used to give him the nickname of Jiva. Chi Jiva? <laughs> <laughs> and you were one of them as well. And it was a time of the power of the young people to lead. You have to look at your children. That actually you are the main, as a, as a mother, the main mentor from birth to five years. Then you and your husband will share the responsibility from five to 15. Because after 15, you will become like a grown up young man or young woman, able to recognize but the first recognition comes from your breastfeeding because you feed him love and care. You know the two sentences my mother taught me, don't actually look up at others. You'll have headache and neck ache. In Arabic, mix with the poor to feel content, satisfied. When you mix with the rich ones, you will feel miserable. And this was the, ma the mother who taught me that. And this was the cornerstone of my upbringing. That's what you need to engage yourself, you know, your children in scouting, in sports, in outing, to minimize the poisons which could be received by them through many social media and we don't know. You have to do the extra mile. In the good old days, we used to buy the videos. You know, the videos and the video machine and all this, and the, and the, the tape recording. And we used to put them in the car, and when we sit down, there was no satellite at that time for the video of series, drama. We we'll sit down, all of us together, to watch this drama. The Islamic drama, the historic drama, and the others. Nowadays, everything is available. It's up to you. To be a friend, you and her. To be a friend to your children. If you don't, somebody else will be.
Yes, sister. And the woman I'm leading. <laughs> Yeah. Just, 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 <laughs> seeing you watch this film or reflect back on your life here, is there anything you would change or anything you would get? When I was watching the film, I remember <coughs> the good old days, which I feel pity that you cannot see it anymore. I remember when we were very happy to come to Glasgow here, not to stay in a hotel, to stay in a friend's house, to stay in a mosque, to stay in a community center, okay? To be very happy when we raise 100 pound, Mr. Fundraiser, <laughs> or 75 pound. Said, hey, Narayat Akbir, 75 pound. These good old days, is not dead because the pound was the pound. Now the pound is nothing. The value of the pound nowadays, my first salary as a doctor was about two, three hundred pounds a month. Can you imagine? A month. A month. Not about a few thousand pounds a month. And I was very happy, actually, with this. So if you ask me what will you do differently, if I do it again, I said there's some certain things that do it exactly the same. The only thing would be different is using the technology to, to uh, speed up the values which we knew about it, the principles and the morality and <coughs> message, spread the message and accomplish the mission. And nowadays, don't be distracted by the amount of money you can raise. It means nothing. If you give it to somebody who is not qualified to use it or to spend it properly. The challenge nowadays, my sister, is how can we bring the second generation and the third generation and the fourth generation while we are in position? The good thing in the 80s you see, I left at 2008 because I want to do something else, which the organization cannot do it because it becomes a big machine. And it's very unfair to make the big machine to run your speed. You might speed might be 200 miles an hour, but the big machine is about 50 miles an hour. Because new initiatives, and one of them is how to bring or to build up the future leaders from people at the age 15, 17, 18, university graduates, young officers, to be coached, mentored, and trained, and sent to the field. Nowadays, we are suffering in UK and in the West of not having the highly qualified second and third and fourth generation. Most of the people working in the humanitarian field now, unfortunately, are recycled going from this organization to this organization. No new blood. We have to structure a system to build a new generation. Why you are in position? I just didn't finish my first sentence two, two minutes ago. When I left, alhamdulillah, five of the young people, one of them was Nasser, the African, was in the, in the, in the movie or in the film, became CEO. Aruna Atallah, if you remember his name. Salah Sayyid, another one. Uh, Nasr Haqqa Hamid, the third one. Uh, what is the other one? Uh, uh, Nasr Haqqa Hamid. Uh, so, Wasim, 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 Wasim now, yeah. the current. Wasim, or, not Wasim, yeah. Wasim Yaqum was, was the country director. But the CEO of the organization was Wasim uh, Ahmed. Nowadays, even Afan, the head of the uh, international department of, of project, program came as a young graduate at the age of 20. Now he is the head of the division of international program. Those people you have to make them and they're just pointing at you and at any one of you while you are in position. Don't cry on them when you leave. When you have the power, create them. Empower them, mentor them, support them. Some of those people 
Nowadays working for UN, whether in the Middle East or in New York or in Geneva. They were at your age. He was thrown into the deep end. And you need to tell them what did you do? And, and when you when you went to Kurdistan. <laughs> no, no, it happened. It is not your right. It is the right to understand at that age you were thrown into the deep end and you were asked to be thrown with, with your, his hand was tied in the middle of the ocean. And was, he was told not to be drowned. Being humble. No, no, it's, it's your story today. No, no, no. no. But you are a part of my story. Yeah. He's a part of my story. Go on. Go on, Jeff. No, I, Go on, Jeff. You, you know, it's like I was saying that, that Dr. Hani gave me $75,000. I've never seen that amount of money in my life. Oh. I put it into my pockets. Right? And I, I didn't know what I was going into. And then going into the airport in the security line. And then the people, the, the person saying, look, um, empty your pockets. And you know, you, you know, what do you do? And it's a big line, people yeah. going through security. So I said, can I get a private search? It just came out of my head and I don't know, you know, this Allah helps in whatever yeah. way. And so in the private search, I'm taking out all this money. And the man is looking at me. If this happened now, you'd be in jail. <laughs> And then I took out an ID badge, which I still got. I made it myself, Islamic Relief, and the person was really happy that someone was going out to help somebody. You know, I've never seen that in, you touch people's hearts, and uh, that person's heart was touched. And uh, I was able to go on the plane there, and some of the things that you see there, you know, have a big impact on you. I mean, I watch young children carry buckets of water, water. you know. This is in, in camps, because people are in transition, they're moving from place to place, in camps, young children having to go and get water and bring it back to their families. And when you talk to these people, the majority of these people were educated people. You know, the doctors, engineers, teachers, you know, they, they, they weren't, you know, they were just like ourselves. Yet they were having to cope and live and they're not complaining. See, this is the thing I think Dr. Hani mentioned it. They didn't complain. They just got on with their life. They, they know that they're in this thing and this is happening to them and they just get on with their life. Look how we complain. Something happens here. We're shouting, screaming, complaining all the time. Those people, they just got on with their life. And, you know, a lot, I think, you know, when Dr. Hani is saying that people should go out and see things, really to actually go out and see what people, what situation people are in, you really get a feel for how, I mean, the first thing that Dr. Hani says to anybody is, is that it's what's in your heart, your intention, your sincerity, you know, because this work is, that's what it develops because you have to be, you know, pure of heart to do this work, you want to help. And even afterwards, I made this exhibition and I put it up on the art gallery here, Museum Art Gallery, and you cannot believe that the amount of Scottish women that were coming by crying from the impact they could see from the photographs. You see, the thing is that this is why I think the important thing is that it's not just about Muslims, it's about humanity, it's about people. I and mean, when people are suffering, we should be the people that support them, no matter who they are. Because they've got hearts, they've got emotions, they've got feelings, and if people need help, we should be the ones that help. And you know, you've got to really, you know, look at Dr. Hani in the mouth. I mean, you've got to remember, someone who's a doctor, leaving a career like that, you can, can't imagine anyone leaving a career to go and do this work. People think you're crazy. No, seriously, that you, you think you're crazy and, and nowadays, and especially to work hard to get to there, to become a doctor is such a, an amazing thing. And, uh, and the many people that he's had been in touch with, young people like myself, who, you know, the, the greatest thing that I got from that movie was the map. 
was the vision. Because when I set this place up here, it was the vision. If you've got a vision, you've got a direction, you've got somewhere to go towards. If you lose that, you just go in circles. And I think this is at the end where you were disappointed because people are just taking it as a job. They're not seeing a way ahead, you know. You know, sometimes you have to penetrate through things that you can't, you know, it's beyond. And I think this is something that we're privileged to be with people that are able to have that foresight to see beyond what's there because not many people have that and I think this is what we we need and we need our young kids to be really a lot more serious in, in their learning because we spent years and years and years studying for what you get a job you get that but what do you do Things are not the same. See, now, when I used to work in the secondary schools, people used to just talk about the paycheck. They were worried about their, their paycheck, you know, and things like that. And when I was young, you see the teachers, they used to spend their time doing so many extracurricular activities with the kids. They used to go out on Sundays. This doesn't happen anymore. You know? But it's, you, you know... People, it brushes off on you as a young person growing up, meeting people like Dr. Hani. It's not Dr. Hani, there's so many people, you know. That's right. And uh, I mean, I thought he was, everywhere I was going, I used to bang into him. I was studying in Egypt. I met Dr. Hani, the Mufti of Bosnia. I was in Qatar, I was studying in Qatar. I met Dr. Hani. I, I couldn't leave him this everywhere. Is my, this is my engine. <laughs> <laughs> or my Afri tablet. Yeah. So, I mean, please ask questions because it's a good opportunity. The amount of experience he's got and the wisdom of that experience that he can share. So, you know why I pushed him? Because I want to show you a success story. If I die today, he is carrying on and raising the flag, him and others. That's why I'm very proud of sitting next to Jiva actually, who is speaking better English, because my English is cracking Egyptian English, <laughs> and we are Egyptian, teaching everybody English, when we don't understand what English is about, actually. Thank you, sir, for letting me to sit next to you and to listen to you. Yes, brothers and sisters, yes. Um, what advice would you give about forming teams? Because I think perhaps one of the hardest things when you're starting a project or involved is to build a team. And particularly I'm thinking back in, in the days when you started with Islamic Relief, nobody knew it. It's easier maybe to attract people to something that is known and successful. But what, how did you build the team? What were the characteristics you looked for? How did you, did people come and go or how did you hold on to them? What was your approach about building a team? To be very honest, teams? it was an ad hoc. To be very honest, Jan, yeah. I'm not going to tell you that I've been planning it, strategizing it, getting a consultant, all this rubbish. It was ad hoc. You had, as Brother uh, Javid was saying, the vision of the drive. And if they see you as a sincere individual, committed, they will swallow your mistakes. Up till now, he used to tell me, you are the worst ever manager that you have worked with. But because you had the vision, we were following you. So here is a leader, but not be a good manager, but can be a visionary, committed, sincere, humble, showing the humility, so the young people will actually follow him blindly. Most of the people we started with, or they started with me, actually were young people, secondary school, secondary school in the 90s, or late 80s. And they used to come and work. They were a workaholic. Not for the money. The spirit was there. At the end of the day, by 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever it is, it is some ships 
half kebab or half, uh, not half chicken, sorry, uh, half, half of the leg of the chicken, I mean, not half of the chicken, half of the leg of the chicken, or whatever you call it, or only chips. Some of them now, if I say, remember Sakandra Ali? Sakandra Ali is in, uh, in Turkey now. He's the head of uh, Ofid, that used to be Defid in the good old days, for Syria. He started as secondary school. Jangir Malik, Shaheen, the wife of Jangir Malik, Anwar Khan was secondary school, and, 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 and. So if you give the space to young people to stand up next to you, they will grow. They will grow. The stage is not only for you and for the big people. The stage was made to let you to allow the young people to stand on the stage with you and after you. So you train them while you were in position, while you have the authority and the power. Yes, sister. Um, so my question is slightly different. Um, it's really good to see that you really empower your daughters in the film, and you've got a lot of... You know what my daughter today? Yeah, man. Oh, mashallah. So there you go. You've so you go and have a holiday with her. Yes. <laughs> Give me the address. Um, so <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, and obviously Islamic Relief, there was a few people, a few women there. But in general, in Muslim Muslim charities in general, there's very few, I mean, I, I've been volunteering in charities for the last 15, 20 years. There's very few female leads that you see visually in these organizations. Why is that and how do we change that? Oh, she opened the uh, Panadora <laughs> box. <laughs> Why there is no woman in the Muslim child sector? To be very honest, generally speaking, most of the organization run by men who are extremely traditional. Yeah. Extremely traditional. They don't understand one thing, that half, at least half, of the people who, who claim that we help are women. Yeah. All and they need women to understand their culture, to understand their feeling, to understand their private problem. Because women can open up for another woman. Okay? It's happening very slowly. Because the people at the top could be traditional, could be coming from so-called, which I don't call it, so-called, as they call it, Islamic background. Islamic background empowered the woman from day one. Yeah. Baby Khadija, alayhi salam, was the backbone of the Prophet from day one. Lobbyist, advocate, financer, and supporter from day one. You can't don't come and tell me that Islam did not empower the woman from the inception of the message of Islam when he came, uh, trembling in fear, say, cover me, cover me, cover me, cover me, after meeting Jibreel alayhi salam. And she gave him the solid message. Allah will never ever let you down. And she gave him the characters of him as a social worker before becoming a prophet. Allah, this was Khadija. Then bend on this. The respect of the Prophet ﷺ to sit down with women and to listen to them and to talk to them and to empower them. The empowerment of Quran to women compared with any other religion. The value of woman is equivalent to the value of men. I have certain specification and function, and women have certain specification and function. But we still, before Allah, as equal human being. So we are not second class citizen. Even my wife take more reward than myself. You know why? Because she takes 50% from me when I travel. Now she's taking 50%. Another thing on patients at home, another. Then bringing up the children, another. So she might be taking 75, 80% and they're taking 20%. Actually, that's why when you get your children married, let them to marry the woman who can build the community. But you are 
you are the community builder, either the front line or gelling the family. Everybody now from different backgrounds fighting the, the, the concept of family, fighting badly the concept of family. The concept of family is the concept of community building, is the concept of making nation, is the concept of building countries, is the concept of building civilization and renaissance and future generations. It's you as a woman at the central point of it, as a leader of the house. And you are the leader of the house. One day, it will happen that actually more young women should be trained and go up the ladder to take the chairmanship. So we are struggling for it. We started to put them in boards, like in, in, uh, in Muslim Chess Forum, I've got two or three women, Islamic Day for World Pride, I've got about three or four women in, in, in the board, from uh, Malaysia, from Indonesia, from uh, Sweden. So it's starting to happen. Slowly and progressively. So, so, but organization without woman is like a one eyed man, or one eyed woman, or a limping individual. Organization without woman and young people is a blind organization. No matter how much money it has. And you caught me. If they want to have a fight with me, let them to see me around, and they will see them around. Because I'm a street worker, I'm not an office worker. And David will tell you how did you, he used to me to, to hit me in the good old days, and they used to laugh. <laughs> yes, sir. You know King Charles quite well. What sort of king do you think he will be? I think uh, I knew him when he was a prince, so I did not meet him when he became a king, so to be very honest, yeah, because I'm not Mr. Uh, whatever you call it. He was extremely interested in Islam at a certain uh, period of his life. He heard a lot about Islam. He had a lot of people to advise him about Islam. He was so humble, and I remember that one day he said, I'm going to be the king of everyone, not actually the king of certain uh, religion. This was when we knew him in the 90s and in the beginning of this uh, century. But since he became a king, I have not had the honor to meet with him. But I still think that he is a, 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 a humble. Uh, yeah, and he is not like the king. You know why the difference between him and his mother? I need to say to this, this. His mother from the age of 15, 16, went straight to the establishment. As a spokes young girl to the young people worldwide about a message to the young people in the Second World War. Okay? Uh, uh, him was left for these 40 or 50 years as a crown prince, mixing with the common. So the big difference that his mother was actually came out from the establishment at the very early age of her life, so she goes and works by the book. He was left till the age of 70 or 74, till he became a king to go to the establishment. It's very difficult to change some of his uh, characteristic after becoming a king, which is good characteristic. Young people, you want to ask anything? Are you are young people? <laughs> okay, you're gone. Do you think during all the challenges that you've faced, what's well, like the, so you call like the trials and stuff that you've had to face, like, what's well, like the best way to like keep the intention throughout throughout all the challenges and all the deeds that you did? I think the, the remedy of keeping your attention clean and clear, I mentioned it is that you have to organize a program for yourself, for myself. <coughs> Most difficult part of it is Qiyam al which is standing up at night. Even for two raka, it's the most difficult part. The second difficult part is to keep uh, reciting or reading Quran. If you can't read Quran, listen to it. And I advise my sister in the room, 
uh, quite often I keep uh, the great sheikhs, sorry to say this, most of the great reciters came from one country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to become Arabic. The Arabs will know that. You are Arab? And no. Arabia, yeah? which means Syria. Yeah. Yemen. Yemen? Mm -hmm. uh, but still, uh, a good reciter from where? Uh, Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Egyptian yeah. I see as 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 it's been said that the Quran has been revealed in Mecca, uh, recited in Egypt, and collected or preserved in uh, Istanbul or Tel at, at that time. So this was the this was the quality. And I advise you to listen to three Kari. Muhammad Rifat, he died at the, in the nineteen fifties, but his voice is angelical. You can't imagine that a man at the age of he had with this voice. And I become an adept. Uh, Sheikh uh, Minshawi, okay? The third one is Sheikh uh, Mustafa Ismail. Huh? Osari is, is, a tra is a traditional teacher, okay? Osari was a, was a teacher of all of them. So why you are at home, sister, even doing something? Listen to it, even if you don't understand it. Even if you don't understand it, keep listening to it. Because when you keep listening to it, you bring the angels around you, you're in the kitchen, listening to it with you. And you give the reward to the sheikh who is reciting after he is dead. Okay? So this kind, when you are in the car driving, listen to something. Don't undermine. Even if you don't understand, the Arabic language. This is the second one, which is have a, this kind of listening to the Quran. Listening to scholars, unfortunately, with the barrier of Arabic language, most of the great scholars who have the metaphor and the depth of the knowledge, I'm not going to say Egyptian again, but are Arabs. And I feel pity for, for the younger generation like you of not being able to understand what is being mentioned by those great scholars or mufassirin who explain the meaning of the uh, Quran and Hadith and the others. But if you can actually listen to a scholar of today who is very well known as honest, pious, learned, and not politicizing Islam. Because nowadays, there's a lot of politicization of the message of Islam, unfortunately. This is, you have to have a sheikh to learn from him. Then, actually, be among us a group to support you. Choose the ones whom, when you sit down with them, they remind you of Allah. When you live with them, they are still reminding you of Allah. Not the people who will come and chit chat with you about girls, about cars, about uh, what do you call it, uh, houses. Yes, that's not a problem. But actually, you need to have a group of people whom you are attached to them or meeting them regularly, and they are reminding you of the message of the history, something serious. Because any day will pass by without you remembering the history, the suffering, the achievement, the great knowledge being passed to you or to us by the scholars will be this will be missed when we see our days as empty boxes at the day of judgment, unfortunately. So have a program for yourself. And be good to your family, by the way. Don't say that I go out and uh, so, and ignore them. Don't deprive them from what Allah gave you of love, of care, of money. Eat the leftover of your children, actually, and don't leave anything in the plate. To let the plate to make it far for you. Eat the leftover of your grandchildren. Because a lot of you Syrian or Yemeni or Afghani children don't have what we throw into the dustbin and the rubbish.
as I have seen it, I've seen it many, many times. And be good to your parents, your neighbors, your friends. One by saying, one of my best friends, uh, there's an organization called Ithar Relief in, in Birmingham. Uh, Sultan was dying of cancer of the larynx. Very difficult to treat. Extremely difficult. Yani impossible to treat. To a point that he was hospitalized at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And the doctor came one day to his daughter and to his, his daughter Suad and his wife told him, finished, can't do anything for your father or your husband, he's dying. The daughter refused. The wife was in tears. But one of the brothers rang the people in East Sudan. There's a camp in East Sudan, many camps, 14 camps of the Eritrean refugees since the 1983, okay, or maybe since the 70s, and told them that Sultan is dying. Please pray for him. The whole camp stood up in prayer for Sultan till Maghrib time. Sultan is still living 10 years up till now. This is the power of dua from the people you love and you don't have any connection with them. This kind of brotherly or sisterly love has to be there for the people that you serve, the people that you think about, the people that actually try to help and you educate and they make the dua. Actually, as the hadith of the Prophet he said, Rubba Ash'atun, Aghbarun, Madfu'un bil abwab, Law aqsama ala Allah la abarra. Maybe this individual with uncombed hair, dusty hair, when he knocked the door to visit you, you look from behind and you pretend that you are not there. If he comes to propose your daughter, you will never give her to him. This individual, if he stood up to ask Allah something, swiftly the response will come. This is what happened to Sultan Abu Salman in Birmingham more than 10 years ago. The power of dua of people that you serve and you don't know them. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, brother. Your wife is asking you, or your sister. <laughs> wife and sister, both, both of them is good, huh? The wife is a sister as well. Or the sister is a wife. Uh, brother and sister. Well, you are my daughter. Come on, my daughters. Stand up and speak. Um, uh, I would I'd probably say, you know, I, I don't know if uh, every person, like, how, like, say if you're just a normal, ordinary person, you sometimes you feel like you can't really make change and go to these countries and make change. What can you do here to, to make change in your community? What would you advise? You cannot say that I cannot make a change unless the change will happen. When we started, nearly 40 years ago, we never dreamed, we never dreamed that we'll be here today. Actually, I was in, uh, uh, recently, I was in Ireland. Before that, I was in Italy, over in November, to attend some meeting there. And when you look at this, and you look at the younger generation who came after 30, 35 years, or 25 years, to carry on the same mission, when we were in the 80s, we were busy trying to do something. We never thought that we are going to be a big organization or multi-million organization or that. We were actually making ourselves busy to do the delivery, like those Uber who take the food, what the food, what the food, what the food, what the food. Just eat. Huh? 
Just eat. Just eat or just swallow or whatever they call it. <laughs> okay. We were like them. We didn't have telephone. We didn't have cars. None of us had a car in the 90s, even in the mid 90s. We used to walk, take the buses, and take the coaches to travel. But we were busy working. Then we find after that that the change is happening without any planning. Nowadays, if you want to make a change, if you ask me now, I have to program it. Because the good old days, as Javid was talking about the late 80s and beginning of the 90s, the atmosphere was different. Nowadays, you have to build the program. Actually, not actually to do it like we did it before. And don't ever come and say, I am going to make the change. I am going to be a change maker. It doesn't work this way. It works by you working, showing humility, being humble, and being patient, and letting people to love you to make the change with you. Because nowadays, change making process is not one man show. It's a teamwork. And the brother was asking this question at the very beginning. And the team was used. That's why actually, never ever uh, refer to the success of an organization to one man, even if or one woman, even if he or she were the originator. They started maybe, but with the support of Javid, with support of you as unsung hero, the mission was accomplished. Success. And the achievement is not one man show. It's a teamwork. Even in the football, the midfield player create the pass to the striker. The striker without the pass, he cannot score the goal. Team. So that's why, sister, I thank you for what you have asked me. And they don't know what to say. <laughs> don't ever think that knowledge has an end. Otherwise, Allah could not have sent Al Khidr to teach Musa. السلام, he thought that he is the most knowledgeable. He said, No, 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 sir. Khidr, go. He is a Khidr and then Musa. And actually, Musa could not be able to comprehend. Al-ilm al the ilm inspired by Allah to Al-Khidr was not given to Musa, the Prophet. And Al-Khidr was not a Prophet, was a good man. But he told Musa, stop, you don't have the knowledge that I have. There is no end for learning. You got your, your, your bachelor degree, so what's next? You got your master degree, what's next? You got your PhD, what's next? You finish your PhD, you go to this position, what's next? Keep looking at what's next. Keep having your ambitious soul to build the community and build people around you. Non-stop process of building by your ambition and the humility towards others. This will keep you going. Thank you, sister. <coughs> Any more? Or we start to... It seems that women so are just, winning. Yeah. So can I just ask, that, is this film available anywhere to watch? I think you can find it on YouTube. Or is yeah. it going to be released or what, how is it going to be shared? It's on YouTube, I think. Is, is it, it just on YouTube? Oh, find it, please. Okay. Yeah. I'd sure like to share it with other people. It's such an inspiring... Actually, you know, what's really nice is that if most people don't do this, but, you know, we all have devices now that we can share things. And I noticed that many activities that we do, people don't share. They only share what they're eating or things like that. But you know, the fashion, the fashion. yeah. So even if you wrote something that you benefited from today at this yeah, talk, exactly. it'll be really, really nice, and it would help. You know, Islamic Relief. It would help the film festival. It'll help a lot of people, and plus it will help yourself because you're actually giving a message out to your many, many friends out there. Because sometimes we think about what do we talk about? That's right. But important things like this, rarely people talk about them. 
unless they're coming from a family of activists or people who are trying to change things and they've got that thought in their mind and plan to do these things. So if people could just put in their Facebook messages, oh, I enjoyed this film today. I learned so much about the development of, of young people and things like that and how important this is for the development. You know, this is such an important thing that we can do. You know, so just see you. And, and to be a very honest, sister, we were knowledgeable. We were not knowledgeable when we started maybe 40 years ago. We learned it through our mistakes, through our failure, through our you know, short-sightedness at the time. We kept learning. But the only thing is very important for you is when I do a mistake, I have to stop and learn from it and not to do it again. This is something very important. And none of us should consider himself or herself indispensable, is this the right way? We are all accountable. And transparency here is extremely important. One day, uh, I made a talk called my Aurat. No Aurat? It's, it, it carries a, a connotation of the private organs of the individual. But my Aurat in management. My failure in management. I'm a failure. Because sometimes people think, oh my God, you are a superstar. Your sister is, has done great achievement. But she has also made mistakes. We need to see the mistakes, and this is we talk about transparency, as well as the achievement. Otherwise, sister will be like angel, but you are not angel. Yes. Has your wife yet given up on sin and wants to go back to Egypt to be a farmer? <laughs> <laughs> that much is a wife. That would be like, you're not doing this. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> How did your wife react to you giving up medicine and wanting oh, to become a oh, farmer? Oh, oh, oh. My oh, wife right. is, is one individual which very rarely defines someone like her nowadays. I'm just making it loudly. She hates me mentioning her name in any public meeting. One day when I was invited to attend a reception at the Buckingham Palace for the ambassadors, she said, no, I'm not going. She was almost twisted by the children and by one of the senior women in the family. She said, yes, Raya. She said, yes, auntie. She said, go. She came with me. The second year, the same reception again. She told me, listen, I went, I saw the queen, her husband, her son, her daughter, everybody. Enough is enough. I don't want to go again. This was, this was my wife. So my wife was easy going with patience. Okay? And when my mother uh, saw a dream, in the maybe 60s or 70s, I can't remember, that her, her father, which is my, 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 my father-in-law, came and gave my mother an apple. An apple in Egypt at the time was the most expensive, it was three pounds a kilo. My salary, when I was qualified in 1970-something, uh, was 17 pounds. So you can imagine, one kilo of apple is about three pounds. So my mother interpreted the dream that one of us would marry one of the daughters of uh, uh, Yusuf Bey Labi, because they were originally Turkish, Turkish and Egyptian. And support interpreted by that my brother would do that, but my brother did not. It came to me, actually. And she was the best dream for my mother and the best support without her sister. <coughs> Actually, we could not have been able to do what you think is an achievement. Because she was there like a rock. I, I have a lot of mistakes, and they're always rude, isn't it? Is that right? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I know a couple of times. But <laughs> Quite often and very silly and thick and uh, all these bad things. But she took it. Well, uh, nowadays, 
I ask, I advise my young brothers and sisters, why is the divorce rate is high? Why when I have a wife with five children, does not speak English, she stood like a rock and I'm leaving her 24 seven. You know, sister, what's your name? Uh, yes, me and sister Flower. You know, sister Flower? <laughs> All the sisters are flowers, huh? <laughs> sister Flower? For, for at least five, six, or seven, or eight years, we never spend Ramadan with our families at the very beginning. This is from mid 80s. We never had breakfast, iftari, with the family. What kind of wife, wives, not only my wife, but the brothers in Germany, the brothers in France, Holland, and Belgium, what kind of wives were there to stand patiently during Ramadan and used to leave the house from the first day and come after Eid? Nowadays, if somebody pick up the nose of his wife, I want a divorce. You have a nose and I have a nose. Pick my nose and pick your nose. What's the problem? Actually, this kind of patience and perseverance was there. You have to bring it back to the younger generation like yourself. Actually, because the, 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 the most joy, the joyful day for the devil is the day of divorce. And he is succeeding, unfortunately. I have my space, I have my income, I don't need you, get lost. I take the house, I take the car, I take the flat. This is not Islam. That's why when you look at leaving medicine, I took the permission from my wife and from my mother as well, rahmatullahi Because my mother's dream was to get my doctor of medicine. And also I failed. I never succeeded from the first time. So you know that. I failed my doctor of medicine as well, actually. And I told my mother, listen, khalas, this is a, this is a certificate. This was 1992. When I went to Egypt with the Grand Sheikh of Bosnia, and now, alas, your son become a DD. You know DD? Three Ds. Huh? D for the bachelor, D for the MD, and D for the honorary do do doctor. So I'm three that what? Three Ds. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I said, alas, my son, uh, I'm, I'm very happy with you. Do whatever you want. So the permission of these two women made me to stand in front of you with dua. You know, when I was leaving today, she was asking me to make dua. Not she was cursing me because I'm leaving here today, maybe Monday I'm going to travel another country, inshallah. But what she was saying to me, please remember us in the dua and remember your children in the dua. And this is the wife that I want you to be like her. You are Sister Flower, and she is Sister Yusreya. Yusreya come from Ease. Yusr, huh? Inna Maras, Yusr. And then Mr. Happiness, Honey. Honey. Or Mr. Honey. You know, Honey is a sweet honey. Yeah, what about your father? You didn't mention much about your father. My father was a scholar of Islamic uh, uh, theology, qualified from Azhar 1935 and got what equivalent to PhD in 1937. And he was number one in this year on the, in the Azhar, uh, in the rank. And uh, I traveled with him. Uh, this was another big decision for me when I was at the age of 16. He was uh, uh, getting a job in Libya to work in the Islamic University. And I was with him. His first time to leave the family and to be living with my father alone in Benghazi. That's why I have got very strong sentimental feeling to Libya. You know what my sentimental feeling was? When the Arab Spring started in Libya on the 17th of February, I was in Benghazi on 27th of February. Well, shoot to kill was all over the place. 
and I was there even for one day. I went to Salah Abu Qasim, and because Salah Abu Qasim could not be able to speak uh, Arabic, I have to bring one. I didn't sleep one, one day, Cairo Benghazi, 18 hours, spent a few hours there. By midnight on the same day, second day, I came back to escort Salah Abu Qasim. This was Libya for me. I loved all those countries. And this is what my mother taught me. Be like my mother, not my mother, be like Khadija. Because my mother cannot stand up to the level of Khadija. And be like Khadija, be like Aisha, be like Asma. And you'll be able to rise and raise the community behind you or with you. And you can do it. You got it? You will do it. Yep. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Hani. Uh, oh, no, not, not the names. Not. Oh, do you, no, do you want to say something? A question? Uh, no, come, come here. Yeah. No, just a minute. I'll call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call him. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Um, I just want to thank Dr. Hani, and uh, we ask Allah to give him a long life and mm -hmm. to continue the, the visions and the. The, the things that he wants to achieve and and if he doesn't achieve them we pray inshallah that you'll be you left back for the young people behind to take on all these uh, challenges and uh, the most important thing that we hope we take is to keep a pure heart and be sincere in everything you do and work hard and inshallah we can do this as well i just want to let james say a few words about the arabesque okay. uh, film because he's one of the directors of that organization. He's come all the way from Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not that far, away. not that far. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, hosting the, the, the films of the festival. Uh, it's a very small beginning for the festival, but the idea is that uh, Hannah, I, my colleague, and myself, uh, we're going to bring more stories from the Arab world and from the, the broader diaspora uh, to uh, audiences in Glasgow and Edinburgh. And this is our, our first attempt at that. Uh, Hanai I worked for many years with Al Jazeera and I think that's why we got the, the permission to, to show the film. And Hanai has also uh, put together a programme of shorts for tomorrow and it'd be great to see as many of you as possible there. Uh, for the future, uh, we would like to programme a much bigger festival uh, to play in Glasgow and Edinburgh uh, of uh, prestigious uh, award-winning films uh, from Cannes and, and various other film festivals. It is our feeling that there isn't enough exposure uh, of Arab films in the UK, and that's something that we would like to uh, address and uh, it's, it seems to have got worse over the last two or three years. Uh, there was a time when uh, the, the very successful Arab films of, uh, that appeared at Cannes would just automatically appear in cinemas in, in the UK, and that isn't the case any longer. So we want to try and address that, but the first step to do that is to have small festivals, of short films, and, and then build an audience and build a reputation uh, for the festival and from there hopefully we'll be able to to showcase the best of Arab cinema. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Let me just comment on, on his uh, Arab festival or Arabesque. Uh, this is what we are lacking. Sister at the back who asked me about the children who don't produce movies. What uh, Disney is doing now with the new director of Disney? Okay, putting to the children different ideology and philosophy of thinking. And a big fight inside Disney about this new director. If we encourage them. I remember one of the great movies in the 60s or 50s, and I did in the 50s or 60s, about uh, a woman uh, who was actually struggling 
uh, against the French uh, in uh, Algeria. His name was Jamila Bouhered. You know anyone Arab here from Algeria? Jamila? And the movie that actually been played in Egypt by somebody called Majdah, she is dead now, convinced the international community to lobby the French government of not having a death sentence on Jamila at that time. It was the power of the movie. The power of the movie, like what Mustafa Al-Aqqad has done, which is the message, which is the only outstanding uh, historical or uh, documentary about Islam, about the message of Islam, okay? And the impact of it from the 70s up till now. The other film that he had, which is The Lion of the Desert, about the great uh, freedom fighter, actually, Omar Omar Mukhtar, rahmatullah Ali, and others. So if you, sister, at the back, will not support something like this, and take the values, the moralities, the history, the culture from them, you always will be bombarded by Disney, Fox News, Netflix, and you cannot control what's put inside this, unless we have the alternative. Everybody nowadays is very happy with the World Cup. It's very expensive, it's successful, but very expensive. When we, we measure the amount of money spent with these hundreds of billions of dollars, and the outcome will have to see the impact. But nobody talked about us trying to buy this kind of uh, uh, social platform like Twitter, like uh, Instagram, like others. At least if we cannot change, we can minimize the poisonous messages coming through the generation that you sister are very worried about your children of watching what is happening there. This mindset start by one step from you. And this festival will be one of the epic of the not only Arab movies, but actually Muslim movies globally from Iran, from Pakistan, from India, from Bangladesh, from the Middle East, from Europe as well. Because drama now is as strong as da'wah or stronger than da'wah. How many millions of people so Ertol or Ertol? Okay? The Turkish. Ertol. Ertol, yeah, but uh, anyway. How many millions? Because the drama has been very well served. And all of us were addicted. <coughs> how many? I don't know how many episodes. Though, man. 500 or 600. You know, the Turkish keep, <laughs> keep producing <laughs> day by day, day by day, day by day. Maybe 500 or 400, 50, whatever it is. And this is actually the impact <coughs> and the power, the soft power. The soft power in society, most, the strongest one of them is the media and drama. <coughs> media and drama. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Just the last just kick him mill around and speak to Dr. Hani or even to James. So just... Um, James is more important. <laughs> <laughs> so just mill around and speak. You've got an opportunity. You can ask some questions and that. Um, so thank you very much. And, you know, when we were doing the film festival, we put a charge of £3 on the films. It wasn't... The reason we put that, we were actually wanting to do it for free mm. and let people come. But we put the charge because we thought that people might not come but take the space and which normally happens people just book it but don't come here so there are films tomorrow if you want to come along just come along we, we don't mind you know so and whatever money that's raised will go to a good cause anyway people did buy tickets so um the most important thing is that come along enjoy the films and uh, and benefit from the time Okay, is that no, thank you. And thank you for Dr. Hani and for James as well and for everybody else for coming here. So <laughs>